Greetings friends, I'm Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Today's topic, how to make any meal the best meal ever. I want to be real honest with you, I am not the world's best cook. In fact, I can't cook at all. And my friends joke that I'm the nutrition and eating psychology guy who is basically useless in the kitchen. So to my defense, I am willing to assert that I make some of the best guacamole on the planet. It's kind of it. And to their point, things get ugly from there. So there's actually one thing that I'm pretty skilled at that I'd like to share with you when it comes to food other than guacamole. And it's how to make any meal the best meal ever. It's kind of a recipe, and it requires some special ingredients. There's some flexibility in this recipe, but there's also a few rules about what you can't have in the meal. And because I'm such a knucklehead in the kitchen, I assure you that this method for making any meal the best meal ever is relatively foolproof. And it is a recipe, and there are six key ingredients that we'll need. So here's the six ingredients. Ingredient number one, celebration. Eating in a meditative state is okay. It can be super satisfying and sometimes a solitary meal is just what people need, but here's the thing. Humans need each other, we feed off each other, and something special happens when we make any meal a reason to rejoice. It doesn't need to be a holiday. Every moment can be made special. Every meal can be a reason to praise life. Celebrate that it's Monday. Celebrate that you have a job. Celebrate that you can still breathe and smile that someone cares about you, or celebrate that despite all the lunatics who've annoyed you in your lifetime, you're still going strong. The more you and I celebrate, the better the food tastes, and the more your digestive organs are going to cheer you on. Here's ingredient number two, love. You know how good love is. I shouldn't even have to remind you, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because if we forget to include love in the meal, and if we're teetering at the edge of depression or disappointment or apathy or loneliness, then we easily fall to the other side where the grass isn't so green. Food can elevate us. Food plus love can make any problem in the world go away, at least for a little while. Love is not so much an ingredient you add to a meal as it is the place from where you prepare it from, where you cook it, where you serve it, where you eat it, where you bless it. The heart is the best kitchen in the world. It makes any meal the best meal ever. Here's ingredient number three, time. Chances are anything in life that you can call the best ever probably needed some time. The best vacation ever likely didn't last for a day. The best kiss ever probably was longer than a peck on the cheek. The best car you ever drove probably took some time to manufacture. I think you get the picture. A key ingredient to make any meal the best meal ever is time. Slow down. Experience the bounty of your food. Take in every sense, every color, every nuance. Time is a gift that we give. It's precious to those we give it to. It shows the universe our investment. Give your meal a hearty dose of time and it will gratefully nourish you in return. Ingredient number four, communion. Communion is so often associated with a religious experience, and for good reason. It's all about connecting to something more, something sublime, something a bit more heavenly, and a simple morsel of food. Communion means that when we eat, we can experience something that goes far beyond nutrition and far beyond the wholesomeness of eating a nice salad. Communion is a beautiful, intimate moment that makes any meal or any bite the greatest ever. You don't need a particular religion to feel a sense of communion. You simply need to access the greater wisdom, the higher good, and the grander dimension that's all about us, but remains hidden from normal view. Communion makes anything you eat a superfood. Ingredient number five, gratitude. Perhaps if we were more grateful for what we've got, then we wouldn't feel like we're so personally not enough. Gratitude is vastly underrated in the nutrition world, and it might be one of the most absentee nutrients in our food chain. We're busy, perhaps you don't have enough time for gratitude, but there are plenty of people who don't have enough food to be grateful for, and their time is running out. Check it out, every four seconds, four seconds, someone on planet Earth dies of starvation. 
If you think about that for a moment, then please say a prayer for the unfortunate soul who just passed on for the lack of food. So let's be grateful together. Food is so valuable, it can save a life. Which kind of leads us to ingredient number six, finality. How we do food is how we do life. Every meal is a metaphor for how you show up in this world. Are you present? Does the meal matter? Are you complaining? Are you multitasking? Are you judging or criticizing this or that? So yeah, add love, add celebration, add time, add communion, add gratitude to every meal if you can. And no matter how immortal we may think we are, life is short. Imagine if every meal was your last meal ever. How would you experience it? How would you worry about your weight? Would you worry about your weight? Would you be concerned so much about your appetite or anything for that matter? So let's enjoy while we can. Make every meal the best meal ever. You owe it to yourself and to the greater wisdom that brought us all here. I hope this was helpful, my friends. To learn more, go to psychologyofeating.com. The Institute for the Psychology of Eating offers the most innovative and inspiring professional trainings, public programs, conferences, online events, and much more. Through our Eating Psychology Coach Certification Training, you can grow a new career and help your clients break through the most compelling eating challenges of our times. If you're focused on your own eating and health, the Institute offers a great selection of one-of-a-kind opportunities to take a big leap forward in your relationship with food. We are proud to be international leaders in online and live educational events that are designed to create the breakthroughs you want most. Our professional and public programs are powerful, results-oriented, and embrace all of who we are as eaters. I'm talking body, mind, heart, and soul. For questions, you can always email us at info at psychologyofeating.com. We'll be sure to get back to you real soon. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thank you so much for your time and interest.